90% of lower back pain that presents to primary care offices has a threatening origin. That means that we have hours, not weeks, in order to determine the diagnosis. Hi, this is Tim, and I'm going to talk to you about the compressive neuropathies that are going to present to our office and the ways that we identify those. Fortunately, most of those compressive neuropathies have a common trait. They compress the spinal cord, which means that they'll produce myelopathy-type symptoms. I'm going to show you three tests that we use to identify myelopathy and a way to remember that in, in the future. The first test that we'll look at, we're all familiar with Babinski test. We're going to take the patient's undersurface of their foot and simply stroke it with a reflex hammer. And what we're looking for is just what we saw here, either a flexor response or a neutral response. If the patient moves their toes into extension, that's a pathologic response. The second thing that we can do is an ankle clonus test. We're going to relax the patient's leg we'll move their foot and then we'll abruptly move it into dorsiflexion. And what we're looking for is the patient to just accept that motion. If the patient pushes on the gas pedal a couple of times by extending their foot, that's not a good sign either. And then the last thing that we're gonna look for, if you wanna come up, Amber, is we're going to do Hoffman's reflex. And the way that that works is we'll take her finger, we'll take the middle finger, I'm just gonna pinch it a little bit and I'm gonna flick it. And what I'm looking for is just what happened, nothing. If the patient moves their index or their finger and thumb together and makes an okay sign, that's not okay. And the way that I remember these is thinking about they're all upper motor neuron lesions. And one of the more common upper motor neuron lesions that you and I see on the street is somebody who's had a stroke. And when somebody has a stroke and upper motor neuron lesion, they're going to move their upper extremity into flexion and they're gonna move their lower extremity into extension. That way they can continue to eat and they can continue to walk. It works a lot better than the other way around. But when we test these neurologic reflexes, we're looking for the lower extremity to not go into extension. If we stroke the undersurface of the foot and there's extension, that's stroke-like, that's bad. If ankle clonus produces some, some plantar flexion of the ankle, bad. And if Hoffman's reflex moves into flexion, like a stroke-like movement, that's bad. This week's blog is gonna give you the clinical presentation for six of the more common pathologies that you and I may run across. It'll talk about the things to look for and the things that pose a threat to our license. I hope that you'll enjoy the blog. If you're a subscriber and want to know more about these tests, you can check out our clinical assessment section. And if you're not a subscriber, we'd love to have you on board. Go to the website, chiroop.com and sign up for your trial today. Hope you enjoy the blog. Thanks for watching.